The Houston Astros avoid the sweep. They come in, they win four to three. Ryan Presley gets a save. Myers, Maldonado, and the crew hit the ball really far and really well. And Urquidy goes down with an injury. Let's talk about this on tonight's Locked on Astros. Alvarez, it's a high drive center field. Beerling's back. This game is turned upside down. There's the runner. Fly ball down the right field line. Tucker comes on. Kyle Tucker. This time they finish the job. Hello and welcome to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H Town Wheelhouse Chancy. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we update you joins for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter, at Eric Talk Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros. Your team every day. Brett, where can I find you at? They can find me at H Town Wheelhouse on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. They can find me at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive. Positive. I love Martin Maldonado in the lineup. Always Stros. All righty. I know a lot of people have been kind of saying, what is he doing catching? Why don't you give um, Diaz some more playing time? Well, this is a game where he was shooting. He was scoring in this game. So that's definitely something that was awesome. But guys, thank you for making Locked on Astros podcast your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, go and keep on subscribing. And go ahead and be proud to call yourself a Locked on Astros podcast every day. That's somebody that listens to our podcast um, every day. And go ahead and listen to us on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, Google, yada, yada, wherever you listen to your podcast, check out the Locked On Astros podcast, your team every day. So, Brett, uh, this weekend series has been pretty forgettable, at least the first two <laughs> games. The offense has been was terrible. It looked like the Phillies were out for revenge for the 2022 World Series. Everything seemed to be going right for the Phillies. The Astros needed this game after Everything that was going right for them in the previous three to four series, they did not need to get swept by the Phillies. And I I was talking to somebody yesterday about the second loss in a row, and they told me, well, remember, the Astros tend to play up to their competition, so maybe the Phillies are just not that good a team. So uh, that's why they're losing to them. I don't know, man. That lineup, Eric, is scary to watch because when you've got Stott, who's hitting out of his mind, Castellanos, who's hitting out of his mind, even Kyle Schwarber at 204 is a dangerous hitter. I mean, Castellanos barely missed a home run late in the game, which would have really changed the complexion of the game overall. It, it It was just a good showing by the Phillies. The Phillies came in. They won their fourth series in a row, and they took care of business. And I joked today on Twitter, I said the Astros bats got lost coming back to Houston and they found them today, which means they're probably going to win. They're going to get some hits, put crooked numbers on the board. And they did. Um, Baseball is a funny sport. You have two talented teams. You have two talented offenses. One didn't show up the first two games. The other did. And that's what happens. I mean, crazy things are happening. I mean, you know, the Rangers are scoring almost 20 runs in the game against the Yankees, you know, and the Yankees were on fire a week and a half ago. The The Pirates are are getting blank today when they've been on fire. So the ebb and flow of baseball is going to happen. But the Astros look solid today. They, they came back. They got the win. They didn't let the Phillies sweep them, which I think is good. You go into the series against San Francisco on a winning note. So I really like the contributions from Maldonado, from Myers, the Arquiti thing. We'll talk about that later. Um, I'm wondering – if there's a strategic play on the Astros part with Jose Arquiti. Uh No, actually, I think it's more on his side. I have a quote from him right here, and it said, I f- feel a little bit of pain in my shoulder and decided to stop. And a reporter asked him, are you worried about it at all? He said, no, not a lot. No, no. I have to rest now, and let's see how it hurts. I'm day by day. 
So basically, that's what he had to say. So if you um, if you looked, I know you and I were both at the game. I happened to go to the restroom at that moment, and I w- I saw like on the, the TV screen, I saw what happened. So he actually threw the ball, and as soon as he did, he kind of motioned to the bench and said, "No, I n- I need to come out. Something ain't right." And right. the ball it was a change up. The ball went outside, and when a pitcher is th- uh, motioning, and the catcher sees that, and everybody sees that. That's that's pretty much a um, just a red flag to let's get this guy out of here. So I know they went out there and talked to him a little bit, but uh, Dusty Baker was asked after the game, and they basically said that um, he has a sore shoulder. They don't know any more than that. They'll have some tests done tomorrow. So as as of right now, they don't know anything. He's day to day. They don't. We don't know if he's going to miss any time. I know we can. T- we can kind of conjecture who's going to p- possibly come up. Oh if yeah, he does have to miss some time. That's something we can talk about. I know you put a poll up on Twitter. I put a, a poll up on YouTube. Yeah, you know, and basically what I what I'm saying here is because um, I have a lot of these kind of deeper discussions with a friend of mine, and we talk a lot about phantom injuries and ball clubs that will have players go on the IL, say something's hurting. If they need to get up, they want to get up another arm. They want to rest somebody. They feel like somebody needs some work, maybe needs some time off. And it saves, it saves their arm. So this is complete, can like complete, like just speculation on my part. There's no like hard evidence to back up what I'm saying. But if it is an injury that cropped up all of a sudden that was kind of planned, then you can get someone like J.P. France, who is hot in there. I don't know about Forrest Whitley. Forrest Whitley has struggled a little bit lately. He He's still pitching better than what we've seen him in the past. But maybe maybe they want to give J.P. France some time. I don't know that Belak would be that guy. Belak has not looked super great. He's got a 4.13 ERA right now. I just checked on it. But I'm just saying, throughout the baseball season, they use phantom injuries. David Sampson talked to us about it. All baseball people talk about it. So I don't think there's a lot to be concerned with Urquidy. He may actually be hurt. I'm not saying he's not, but things like this are going to crop up because you're going to need to give other guys chances to get in there to see how they work, to see w- what they have going on. Because honestly, last year, they didn't use Urquidy at all in the postseason. They didn't even use him. So you wonder how much they value. And he's the guy with a three and O record in the world series. So I'm hoping he's okay. I'm hoping he's not down long. He needs to be consistent and on that mound, but is it something where the club kind of is looking to bring up some other arms and see what they got going? All right. I can just imagine that conversation. Hey, Jose, you've pitched a great game. All right. Um, so I need you to go out there. I need you to get one out. Then after that one out, I need you to throw a change up to the outside and then uh, pretend like your arm hurts. And then that way we can take you out of game. Then we can put you on IL with a phantom injury and kind of save some arm. Some I, look, I, look, I, look, Eric, <laughs> I'm just saying, I mean, I know you I know you think I'm full of BS and that and that's fine. You can think that all, all you want to. But I'm telling you, baseball clubs ab- right. absolutely do this. And yeah. So. But- I don't think um, in this situation, though. But yeah, and I, that's I agree. Fine. I mean, you can you can think that. I, I'm I'm not saying that that's what happened. Right. I'm saying that that is something that we've talked about. My friend and I have been talking about, and he actually said, or Keedy is going to be the first guy that's going to crop up and something happened. You watch, and it's going to open the door for France or Whitley. And he literally, after he went off the mound, he texted me, said, "I called it," and I was like, "You're it's like you're hilarious." And these are things that we talk about. These are not things that we know for sure happen because we're not there. It's like when people say they know exactly what's going on with Maldonado and and why Maldonado starts. You don't know exactly why Maldonado starts. You don't know the you don't know. I don't know the conversations he has with the pitchers and all that stuff. So we speculate on these things. I'm hoping that it's nothing serious because, look, we can't afford another injury because McCullers is down. He's still not back. There's a real, real timetable for him. But this is a great game. This this game was phenomenal, and it was like they had the stamina to just work through the tough times. And if you need something simple to get you through the tough times, you need to go to Built Bar. It's a delicious snack. It doesn't have the calorie or the sugars. I promise you, this protein bar will taste like a candy bar and you'll be like, hold on, is this good for me? And I'm telling you, yes, 
They're wrapped in 100% real dark chocolate. That's real chocolate. And they have flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, cookies and cream, so many more. They are packed with 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, and a whopping 17 grams of protein. That is unbelievable. Let me tell you, if you need a box today, you don't have to wait to go to Built.com. You can, but now you can go to your local Walmart or Sam's Club. That's right. Head to your nearest Walmart today and walk to the pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of Built Bars. You can pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate bar, or coconut puff. If you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13-bar box with our favorite hit flavors, brownie batter puff and churro puff. You can thank me later. I'm done. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> not really, but okay. Um, this episode is also brought to you by BetterHelp. Oh, that's right. So BetterHelp is a place where you need to go to check out and talk to someone if you are struggling with various things. It is easy to get caught up in life where yeah. everyone else needs something from you and you never take a moment for yourself. But when you spend all that time giving, it can leave you feeling stretched thin and burned out. Therapy can help you find the tools and find more balance in life. So you can help help you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. BetterHelp is a great service. I've actually used it. It's phenomenal. It's really easy to use. If you're watching, you can literally, it's an app on the phone. You get to choose your therapist. And if you do not like the therapist, at no cost, you can switch and change therapist. You basically fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched to a licensed therapist. Um, and then it's convenient. It's designed around your schedule. You can schedule the appointments when it works for you. And you can find more balance with BetterHelp. So visit BetterHelp.com slash MLB today and get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on MLB. Go to better help for a better you. All right. So this was today's giveaway. Let me make sure I have it right. Uh, so these are coasters. And so they're supposed to be given away to the um, uh, 21 and up. And uh, my son is six, seven. And so <laughs> <laughs> they, they assumed that he was 21. So he got one nice. as well. So I got, well, two I got, I got two sets and I'm actually probably going to give both of them away because I'm, I'm getting some at the end of the season. Yeah. So um, I'll throw that in our giveaway box and we'll start giving stuff away about mid May. Um, we'll start doing some giveaways. Yeah. Let's get past a little bit. Uh, I know my testing season with my, um, my star test is coming up pretty soon. So, but um, I know that Jose or Kitty um, seemed to be going with a lot more change up in this game. Uh, than he normally does. And uh, he also gave up two home runs, one to JT Real Muto. One of them was to Cody Clemens. And yeah. um, this is something that uh, right-handers have hit a lot of home runs against him. In fact, he's given up six home runs, and five of them have been right-handed hitters. So this is something that he does – he is going to give up home runs. We've talked about this before and because he throws a lot of strikes. And so also right-handed hitters have are slugging 565 against him this season. So uh, there is a reason why his ERA was a little bit inflated. Uh, he, he did get off to that great start. And so if this, if this is a phantom injury or a legit injury, whatever it takes, we need to get Jose Arquiti back to where he was in his first uh, few starts because he was dealing. And all of a sudden, Luis Garcia took his mojo and then became <laughs> this this ace pitcher again. And then you have Jose Arquiti just uh, kind of struggling again. So I think until um, we do have an injury update to Lance McCullers, to Michael Brantley, to Jose Altuve, uh, to Chaz McCormick, to basically everybody that's on the list. And I saw somebody on Facebook before the show say, chill out. Uh, this is the Astros B team right now. So wait till the A team's all back together. Then we can start panicking about losing games. But uh, 
the good news about this weekend is Jordan Alvarez returned to the lineup and dude, yeah. he hit the ball on Sun on Saturday and he had a excuse me single today that just yeah. barely went that like, nice. I, I wouldn't say it went like 20, 30 feet and it just, Oh yeah. And he got on base. It was great. I was like, he will hurt you with infield singles and over the fence home runs, you know, this game, Eric, was nice because when you look at the lineup and its onset, even with Alvarez in there, they switched Pena to the leadoff, which was kind of a question in my mind. Then you had Hensley. Um, you had Myers and Bannon. OK, um, no Corey Jolks. Dubon had the rest. He had like 20 straight games, I guess. Um, I guess players expire after 20 games in a row. But you take out some hot bats. You take out some key players. Now, Bannon was 0 for 3. He had a he had a couple solidly hit baseballs but hensley actually hit the ball more than once really hard had some great hits um had the double myers had the absolute monster blast home run in maldonado with the two hits with the double and then getting on base with a single the next at bat um he nearly had a hit his third at bat it just if he would have hit the ball about five feet higher over the third baseman it would have been a c-night single right. it would have been right over the glove but it went right to him and so you you had everybody on this team contribute except for Jose Abreu. Jose Abreu had some moments in this game, five left on base. He, he had ran into key, double play with bases loaded. He had a, that was the I, first that was that was that allowed the first run to score. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. But outside of that, he had a lot of opportunities. He's got a lot of people he all over a right pop now. fly and another opportunity. Oh, I don't think it was bases loaded, but uh, no, but there was a guy on first and second. And he, I was like, pepper right center, pepper right center. Just hit, just hit a single into right center. It'll, it'll score a run. And look, he's, he's not looking good at the plate. I mean, when, when he hit the ball to outfield to right field, it was a very weakly hit ball that there was not a whole lot of power behind. It. I think he got jammed. I think it was on the inside portion of the plate. Maybe it was towards the handle and, why the ball he didn't actually barrel the ball but when you've got five guys on and this is a 311 career hitter with runners in scoring position he, he's just not getting it done offensively let's chalk it up to maybe hey this is april it's an early you know rough start for him he typically starts out a little slow apparently he's hitting better this year at this point than he was last year with the white Sox. Right. so maybe he'll turn it around they told dusty once he gets going he doesn't look back so i really hope that happens but it's great to see Myers contributing with Chaz down. And it's great to see Maldonado contributing because he's yeah. not going to stop being the starting catcher as much as people out there hate that. All right. Before we move on from Abreu, um, I, this was apparently on ESPN broadcast and Brian McTaggart tweeted out it. And this has been the third largest decline in MLB uh, in 2022. Abreu's hard hit rate was 52 percent this year it's at 37 percent last year his k rate was at 16 percent this year it's at 23 percent oh yeah last year it was at his walk percent was at nine percent this year it's at three percent so it's the numbers are going down across the board and i know we've heard from dusty baker that he talked uh he went in called and tried to get a refund from the white Sox and say hey um what this uh first baseman ain't working but they said well he typically has bad bad april okay well april is officially over as of today now tomorrow starts may Let's see what Jose Abreu does from this point on. He did, in one of his final bats, he did uh, have a deep drive that uh, was a high exit velocity. So he is making some strides from time to time. But overall, it just, like that weak pop-up was just so frustrating to watch. I was sitting right behind a home plate, and that was, I'm like, I could, I could probably hit it. Maybe not that high. <laughs> But because uh, they still Eric. have some power there, but uh, <laughs> I know. No, we could not. No, 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 no. Hold on. <laughs> I have been to the cages recently, and no, we could not have hit that hit that ball. <laughs> um, look, I mean, I I get what you're saying though, and yeah. I really think that he will. I think the probability of him turning things around and being a much better offensive player, um, the probability is really, really high there, and. We just have to see. Um, we have to hope 
that that happens. Um, this team is prone to be inconsistent. This team's offense is prone to have its ups and downs. But like we said, you know, it's this is not a full squad. This is not everybody in here. But while your guy who people are saying, well, Chaz isn't necessarily a starter. Um, he's actually gotten a lot more at bat, or he he's gotten more more time out there starts than I think Myers until he went on the aisle. Now Myers has, I think, leapfrogged him in that. But you want your guys, whoever's in there, contributing. Tonight, dude, what about Rafael Montero? What about, you know, Brian Abreu? I mean, Montero, the last couple of times out, he's looked good. Yeah. And Presley came out and got the save. So your relief pitchers came in, and they did a good job. Nerys came in there. You know, he pitched. Um, let's see. Nerys did give up. Nerys had to come up. in and, like, clean up. Abreu uh, gave up Ar- a run. Okay. Arkady's uh, mess. Because yes. Arkady allowed two runners um, when he left, I believe. And yeah, then that's right. uh, Neris had to come in. He had all the time in the world to warm up. And so everybody was worried about what's going on with Arkady. And then Neris has to come in and uh, calm things down. So the Astros needed this victory very uh, badly. I mean, just for a moral, you don't want to be swept by the Phillies. And the Phillies, right. they have a great team. And uh, Falter for his credit, he held the Astros to uh, at bay for a little bit, but he just wasn't good enough. Um, his pitches had some life, but it was, um, uh, it was pretty hittable at times. So well, oh, the dude, Astros Falter. could have done a little bit oh, more against him. A lot more damage yeah. that, that pop fly out by Jordan Alvarez. I was, I was in, I was in section one Oh nine. So I was right there and right. I thought the ball was going to carry. I was like, Oh my gosh, the ball's going to carry into the first row of the Crawford boxes. And it just missed it. So he just got under that. So they were hitting the ball really hard. They were making solid contact. And if if those baseballs are one or two feet further to the right or left, they're scoring seven, eight more runs. And if you need the right parts for the right prices, you need to go to ebaymotors.com. And let me tell you about eBay Motors. For a championship team like the Houston Astros, it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. Even if you don't like Martin Maldonado, look, he was the perfect fit tonight. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guaranteed Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my to my garage and look for the green check to know that your part will fit or your money back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game when you shop eBay Motors. And with over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. Get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusion supply. All right, so I know that we will be going to the game tomorrow. Um, I'm excited about that. Uh, we get to sit behind home plate again, and I'm excited to be able to see what they could do against the Giants. I know the Giants oh, are yeah. not a great team, but if you're not able to watch the game, you're not able to go to a game, a great way to catch all the action, all the hometown play-by-play, Robert Ford, uh, Sparky, go ahead and uh, listen to Sirius XM. Just go and download the SXM app and go ahead and search Astros, and you can listen to all the play-by-play coverage on Sirius XM. And that's definitely something I do when I'm on the road. Yeah, definitely. It's it, it's a great app. It's a great place to listen. Um, the Houston Astros, Eric, I, I, I just liked the win tonight. Um, I thought it was a solid win. You would have liked to tack on a couple extra runs at the end for insurance, but you, you scored four. That's enough. Four runs, excuse me, on nine hits. You gave up three runs on only five hits. And, you know, Houston had that one error. So, I look, I couldn't see the ground ball that was hit to Bregman at third because there was a guy literally sitting so perfectly that when the ball got to Bregman, Bregman would disappeared. And I didn't see if the ball went under his glove um, or what happened with, with that single that went to, that went into left field. 
But other than that, I didn't really see anything else out there that I was, you know, upset about. And, oh, we got to talk about this. Jake Myers sliding catch in center field. And he crushed I mean, a homer. We, yeah. Well, yeah, no, I'm talking about his fielding right now. I know. I mentioned his homer earlier. I'm talking about his fielding. We've got to pay attention to that because we've talked about, I know I've talked about his hesitancy and his lack of looking like he's going for a ball. Almost like was he like mentally kind of checked out on that or was he, you know, trying to play it too safe? And tonight he sacrificed his body to catch that ball in center field. It was an amazing grab because at first I thought Tucker had it. And then Myers came in and made an amazing grab. And so Myers had a great game all the way around in the field and at the plate. And you need that if he right now is taking Chaz's spot and if he's your starter. Yeah, so we'll have to see how what happens when Chaz does come back. But um, so I don't know which fan club you're on now, but this is Martin Maldonado after the game. I've been feeling better and better. I went through a, st a stretch where I wasn't seeing the ball as good, chasing a lot of pitches. In yesterday's game and the game before, I feel like I got good at bats. In my off time, I keep working and building on what I can do. And what he can do is not hit home runs. It's just to hit the little bloop, little single like he did. And then that double, that was a line drive double. And then uh, just, I think that the Astros just capitalized on their little opportunities in this game. And yeah. the Astros uh, are going to be playing. Uh, I know we teased this earlier that the Giants are not a great team, uh, but they are, fourth in the AL West, sorry, NL West right now with 11 and 16 record. Um, so they're four back from the Arizona Diamondbacks. Who would have thought the Diamondbacks would be leading? To hey, the, the Diamondbacks. Hey, man, um, I'm sure our our friend over there at Locked on Diamondbacks is he is he is loving that Millard. Um, right. Look, they're they're um, they're outperforming their expectations. I mean, you got a lot of that going on in the National League. Um, but you got Ross Stripling in the first game versus Luis Garcia. I, I think Luis Garcia comes out and has and has a game on Monday. Um, is it is it Stripling? Didn't he didn't he talk bad about the Astros or didn't he say he was going to throw at him? Was that Ross Stripling? Um, um, I remember. The, I don't remember exactly what happened, but the I, name I does believe it was about. him saying saying something about he was going to throw at the Astros heads or something like that. So Ross, we we never forget those 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 horrible things that you say about our team, and and so um, I just hope that you get shelled. I hope that Ross Stripling just I hope the Astros just rake him over the coals, score ten runs, just just knock him out of the game. That would be great. But tomorrow night's game, I really hope Jolks gets back in the lineup. Eric um, Jolks has kind of cooled off a little bit. I hope he gets in there, contributes, and you wonder will Diaz start a game. Now you just Marty Malnado. So this would be Dusty Baker. Marty Malnado goes two for three, sits in the next game, and Diaz starts because it seems like every time someone gets hot, oh, you got to rest. <laughs> so I'm right. wondering, did Martin just work himself to the bench because he's swinging a hot bat? Well, uh, Baker did address this issue about uh, Diaz and Malnado. Oh, I know he, he did. Said, You've got to feel the best team for that daily basis. Plus, Maldi. I mean, these guys loving love throwing to Maldi. That's the most important combination that's on the field. Your catcher and your pitcher. Dana Brown at, at the beginning of the season said that he was going to give Yiner Diaz about 300 plate appearances. Yeah. He's probably got less than I think he's around 27 28 right now so he's not getting a lot of playing time um so uh, it unfortunately this guy is not going to be able to grow until you do that You're right. and so this is what Dana Brown said I think he's getting some valuable bats here at some point we may be able to give him a few more bats Dusty can be a little bit more creative whether it's at DH or potentially left field I don't think he's losing development time. I think at some point he'll get over the 300 bats that I think we need to get him to. I don't think his development will be hindered at all, but sooner he'll get in more games, hopefully. But the problem is we need to talk about the injury updates. Michael Brantley, he may be returning soon. Jose Altuve might be returning soon. Chaz McCormick might be returning soon. All those at bats, DH and everything, that playing time may I be I bet going away. you. I bet you they slow walk that McCormick. 
I bet you they do. I bet you he's he's out at least two weeks. Um, if they weren't willing to fly him to Reno or Vegas, wherever the AAA team was, the Space Cowboys, because they were worried about his concussion or his back, oh. and they they sent him. That's why they sent him to Double A because they were playing in Corpus. Um, I think they're going to slow walk that. And look, it, it, it's so funny the things that people say about, you know, my fandom or my loyalty to Maldi or this Astros cult that I guess, look, I'll take it. I absolutely love it. Um, I have always said that Yonder Diaz deserves more at bats, that Yonder Diaz deserves to be out there and he needs to be out there. But if Dusty Baker says the goal is to field the best lineup on a daily basis, that lineup today was not the best lineup. It was not the best that they had. I know Dubon is 20 straight games, but Jolks or Diaz is probably better than Bannon. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, I understand what he's saying, and I trust Dusty more than a lot of people do, but sometimes he does say things that don't really pass the smell test. Like, don't say that when you don't put out the best lineup. Like, when you put the best lineup out, say that, and it makes sense. But when you say that and the best lineup's not out there, but, it's but you gotta like rest you your players every, every once in a while. Dubon played that's in not a the lot point. of games. The point is he put himself behind the eight ball when he said that. He said, I've got to put the best lineup out there on a daily right. basis. That wasn't the best lineup. Now, I'm not gonna slander Maldi. I'm not gonna slander Bannon. I look, I said Hensley and Bannon go out there and have a game. Go out there and just hit the cover off the ball. Hensley did a good job, Bannon did not. But that's going to happen. So there have been there are times when Dusty does say things, and I'm like, uh, don't say that. Like, I don't know, word it differently, or word that, or say that phrase when you do have the best lineup out there, right. and it, it it won't get. But man, it people caught on to that and they just rolled with it. And look, Chandler Rome is still <laughs> he's still a thorn in the Astros side, even at, at the Athletic. <laughs> All right, so Michael Brantley did play all nine innings in the Space Cowboys five nothing five to one victory today. Um, he did have uh, he drove in a run, um, so I think that his twenty day minor league rehab window will expire on May 9th. So that means that he still has about nine days left where they can keep him down in the minor leagues. Uh, so they could always start another minor league rehab assignment. So give him another 20 days, but uh, so they don't know when he's going to be ready. So we'll see about that, but it's good to see him play all nine innings because he was coming out after five innings, kind of like spring training, because that's basically what he's in Baker on uh, McCullers. He threw in a bullpen yesterday. He was throwing pretty good. He was throwing really good. You can really tell when a guy's holding back, but he was throwing it free and easy. Um, on Altuve, he's doing great, keeping our fingers crossed. He's on time, on maybe ahead of a schedule. We don't want to rush him. And I think I forgot what they said about Chaz McCormick. I must not uh, put it in here, but um, Chaz McCormick. That's okay. We can we can update Chaz McCormick tomorrow. I mean, yeah. like I said, Chaz McCormick is going to be slow walked. Uh, I don't anticipate, and you know, it's, it's not a conspiracy. They're not they're not trying to hold Chaz back to you know to make Jay you know, you know, make Jake the starter. They clearly said going on the season that it's a competition. It was Jake's job to begin with, that it was never given to McCormick. He was taking the place of Jake and it was always Jake's starting position. And okay. look, Jake's picked it up. He's hitting around 270. He, he absolutely waylaid that ball tonight. It was, it was a no doubter. It was a beautiful thing to see. So, Hey, good win. Let's go take the giants and let's beat them because look, the Rangers, the Rangers offense is pretty stout right now, and 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 they they are firing on all cylinders. I just don't believe in their pitching and the longevity of what they got going on there in Arlington. So I'm not I'm not too worried about them. And with all the injuries that the Astros have dealt with, most notably to Jose Altuve, the Astros finished 15 and 13 in April. So uh, that means all you can do from here is go up. And so 
that's what we can hope for. And maybe Abreu will start carrying the Astros in May. So we'll see about that. So uh, we'll hopefully be talking about another victory against the San Francisco Giants tomorrow. Hopefully uh, Jeremy Pena hits another home run because he's got six on pace for 36 home runs. That's all we got for this edition of the Locked On Astros podcast. Make sure you tune in to us and become an everydayer. My name is Eric Eisman. You can find me at Eric Talk Strohs. You can find Brett at H-Town Wheelhouse. We are the Locked On Astros podcast. Your team every day. And Brett, go ahead and say what you want to say. Maldonado is my favorite catcher. <laughs>